everybody. Uh, welcome back. So today's class is going to be a little bit slower paced. So we are going to be working on our lower back again. Um, and I would like you to have a bolster and a block. We will be using it for more of a restorative part of the class. So I've just got it there to show you how we are going to use it in, later on in the class. So what we'll do is we'll sort of like do um, a bit of a quicker pace to start with. So more of a yin style class at the beginning and then we'll end with more of a yin um, style class. So we'll be holding the postures just that little bit longer and really focusing on getting into stretching out and lengthening the back, okay? So go get your props if you need to. Uh, you can pause and just meet me back on the mat and we'll start on our backs. So we'll start with strength, strengthening our back to begin with, okay? So I'm just going to move these props off to the side. We won't use them at the moment. So just come down on your backs. Starting in just Sutta Baddha Konasana. So just stick feet together and just allow your knees to fall out to the side. Just shut down your eyes. Hopefully you're in a quiet space so you can just come into how you're feeling either this morning or this afternoon whenever you're doing this practice and start to apply your belly breath. So you can place one hand on your belly and one hand up towards your heart. And as you breathe in, feel the belly rise. And as you breathe out, feel the belly drop back down to the mat. And try to keep both inhalations and exhalations even. And do one more just like this. And this time as we breathe in, feel that belly rise. And as you breathe out, I want you to, as you get to the end of your breath, to squeeze the pelvic floor and just gently press the lower back towards the mat. So you're closing the gap. Keep going with that. Starting a little bit of a pelvic floor exercise as well. Do two more. Last one. And you can use your hands to bring your knees back up, taking your feet as wide as your hips. We're going to continue with that breathing and with a sort of cat-cow action with our lower back. So begin to expel any air. You can have your hands resting maybe in a diamond shape just around your um, womb area or your um, sacral area. So inhale and 
And as you inhale, you'll just create a little bit of an arch with your lower back. So there'll be a bit of a gap between the mat and the lower back. So inhale. And then as you exhale, tilt the pelvis up a bit and press the lower back part of your back into the mat. And squeeze those pelvic floor muscles again as well. So inhale, release and create that arch. Exhale, just pushing the lower back into the mat, squeezing that pelvic floor. So do two more of these. Now let's continue to add on. So this time as we inhale, we're going to keep that arch in our back, but we're going to take our hands above our heads. So inhale, reach the hands above your head. Exhale, lower them back beside your body as you press that lower back into the mat and squeeze the pelvic floor. So we're really creating more movement in our body now. Tilting that pelvis up slightly as you squeeze the pelvic floor. Take one more. And let's add on a little bit further. So having our feet as wide as our hips our heels a little bit closer towards our bottom so we can raise our fingers. We're just going to lift up into our bridge and our hands are going to come up over our head and then we're going to bring the hands down and lower. So inhaling, lifting the hips up, hands come all the way up. Exhale, coming down. So just make sure that the knees don't splay out to the side. So keep going with that, inhale. Exhale, come down. Pressing that lower back into the mat. And just do one more. just a more of a fundamental movement. So take your feet towards the bottom of the mat. Flex the feet so that you're up on your heels. So this is just going to strengthen your um, hamstrings and your lower back. Now we have our hands down by our side and then we just wanna point out, so bend our elbows and point the fingers up towards the ceiling. So you're not going to come up very high. It's quite a strong movement for your lower back and your hamstrings. So what you do is you inhale, lift the hips up, and as you're holding here, you drag the heels back and really push into those elbows to give you the support in the lower back. So just hold here, Dragging those heels back, you'll feel it really in the um, hamstrings, really strengthening them. Breathing as you are holding. Take one more big breath. Squeeze it up and slowly lower. Bring the hands down. Now, if this is available to you, you can just squeeze the knees into the chest and just gently give a little rock side to side just to release the lower back a little bit. And just straighten the left leg and just pull that 
right knee up towards the chest area. Now let's just flex both feet so that we're engaging the whole part of the legs. Take an inhale and as you exhale, just take that knee over to the right side and pull it up more towards the right shoulder. So hold it here, so a really nice deep compression of the right hip, the sort of like front part of the right hip. And then we're just going to take that right foot up towards the ceiling. Now you might just be holding onto the ankle you can bend that left knee to give you a little bit more leverage. You might be able to hold onto the big toe. So this is just half happy baby. And once wherever you go or wherever you get whatever grip you have on your foot, just as you inhale, sort of extend it a little bit. And as you exhale, just draw that knee just that little bit further down. So you are using a little bit of arm strength. You can have a hold of the outer part of the foot. And just hold that just for a few breaths. Working on the hips really helps with um, getting that lower back a little bit more sort of flexible and loosening it up a bit. Okay, let's just release that. Let's take that to the other side. So straighten that right leg first, flex both feet, and let's just do that squeezing action towards the chest first as we exhale. So yeah, even though this is a lower back class, we're going to open up the hips as well. Now, as you release it a little bit, take another inhale, and then as you exhale, just take that left knee over to the left side and draw it up towards the left shoulder. Now bend into that right foot, take the left foot up towards the ceiling and just grab hold of whatever you can. And we'll just let it be released first as we inhale. And then exhale, draw that knee down towards the mat. You can hold, put your hand on your other hip so that you feel that you're still grounding the right hip and one more breath release let's just squeeze those knees up again let's take some circular motion with our knees this time one way and then the other way and if it is available to you you can sort of just rock a little bit along the spine i'm on a hard floor so it's not the best but anyway let's come around onto our hands and knees let's take our feet our knees as wide as the mat and our big toes to touch. So, yep, we're gonna come into a wide-legged wide child's pose. But before we do that, I really want us to lengthen, excuse me, <laughs> lengthen and extend. Must be your lowers down and all compressing that air. Let's come up. So, what we are going to do is lengthen the spine first. So, taking the fingertips out in front. So take a big inhale first to lengthen. And with this lengthening, then walk those fingertips out in front and exhale, drop the head down. Ex 
Exhale, all that air. Then inhale, just bring the head up. Exhale, let's walk our hands over to the left side. Trying to get that left hand slightly longer and stretched out slightly more than the, I mean, sorry, the right hand stretched out more so that you're getting a nice stretch down that right side. Then drop the head down and just breathe into it. Then inhale, walk over to the right side. And this time, just wiggle that left hand a little bit further in front. Take a big inhale and feel that side stretch all the way down that left side as you exhale. So really opening up the side of our body. Now come back to centre. Let's come up and just do a few rounds of our cat cow. So dropping the belly, just looking up slightly as you inhale and then rounding into the spine, pushing into the knuckles, opening up the shoulder area as you exhale. And you can draw up that pelvic floor again and the belly muscle, draw that up as well. So just keep going with that. So part of having lower back problems is uh, an indication that you are not using your core when you're going through your yoga postures. So we will be focusing on the core as well. So really engage when you're squeezing into any pose. I really want you to engage those core muscles today. Let's complete with the cat. Now stretch that right foot back and just push into the heel so that you're sort of stretching out the calf muscles and then on an inhale just raise that right leg up now here's where you will need to really engage your core so that you're not letting your back splay down we want to bring it back more up to neutral now you can stay here or you can do the next part of this posture, this spinal balance, which is stretching the left hand out and holding here. And take one more inhale. And as you exhale, we're going to bring the knee in and the elbow in. Inhale to extend. Exhale to bring it in. Do two more. And then Come back to your tabletop, kick the left leg out to the side and we're just going to come in to a modified plank. So our right leg is stretched, we have our left hand underneath our left shoulder. Inhale, just reach that hand up, really extend through the fingertips. Exhale, just take it over to the side and rotate it down. So let's go with a few more of these. Inhale up. Exhale, rotating it down, feeling a nice side stretch. Inhale up. Exhale, bring it down. Now this time, inhale up. 
And using the muscles in your tummy and the muscles in your obliques, you're going to bring yourself all the way up into your gate pose. So stretch that right hand down and reaching the left hand up. So we're getting a stretch down the left side. Exhale, windmill the hands over, come back to your tabletop. Let's just do a rounded cat cow, just to transition. So inhale, drop the belly. Exhale, round. One more. And stretching out the left foot now, or the left leg, push back into the heel so that you feel the calf having a nice stretch. Now inhale, bring that left leg up, take the weight evenly into both hands and just engage that core. Just check that that left hip isn't dipping out to the side. You've still got both hips facing down towards your mat. Now you either stay here, really squeeze that core in, or you take that right hand out, holding here. And on the next inhale, extend everything and then exhale, bring elbow to knee. Inhale, extend. Exhale, bring it in. Two more. Let's just do one more for good measure. I can't remember what I was counting to. And bring it back to tabletop. Let's take that left foot out to the side. Stretch, sorry, the right, the right foot out to the side and our left foot is stretched up. So we're into our modified plank. So inhale, take that arm up. Exhale, we'll just do that windmill action. Inhale to extend. Exhale, bring it over and bring it all the way around. So keep going. We'll do one more. And you can place your hand on your hip before you come up if that's easier, but take the weight into the left foot and sort of like push into that right hand to bring yourself up into your gate pose. Take that right left hand down alongside the left leg and then inhale, reach the right hand up you can take it over if you want to have a little bit more of a stretch. And then windmill, both hands back to the mat. Let's drop the belly for a couple of rounds of cat-cow. Exhale. Squeeze the belly up, inhale for your cow, exhale for your cat. Okay, so from here, take the hands just that little bit further in front, tuck the toes and let's just go into a downward dog just to transition and you can just pedal out the feet just to warm up those hamstrings a little bit more. And then come up onto your tippy toes and we're just going to go um, in and out of a plank to a downward dog to just start warming up the spine a little bit. Now if this is too much, 
bring the knees down and you just come from a child's pose, rounding the back into upward dog, okay? Actually, let's all start with that. We're so kind of like warming ourselves up. So everybody come down on our knees and we'll work towards doing the downward dog to plank. So bring your hands slightly forward, come back, push into a child's pose, then round the spine and just drop the belly, still engage through your core muscles so that you're not letting just the belly drop down to the mat. You really want to support that lower back. Chest comes forward and then come back, round the spine into your child's pose. Coming up again, inhale into your cobra, your high cobra. You can look up or not, whatever is best for you. Back down as you exhale into your child's pose. So you just come as far as you want to. You might find that just here is enough for you. Okay, so we are sort of like getting a little bit of an arm workout as well doing this. And the breathing sort of just flows. I'm inhaling as I'm coming up, but then as I'm dropping my belly, I'm actually exhaling. So we'll do one more. Just rest in between with our child's pose. And then look towards your hands. Let's tuck our toes this time and just come up into downward dog. Now, if you feel this is too strong for you, you can just continue doing what we were doing. But if you want to give a little bit more strength involved and using up, sort of like a downward dog to upward dog, just have a go with me. So what we do is we come up on our tippy toes sort of round our shoulders and then just bring the knees towards the mat as you look up. You don't need to untuck the toe. Then to come back, you lift the bottom and come back into your downward dog. So we'll do one more of these. So come up onto the tippy toes, round the back, bring the shoulders over the wrists, then drop the hips down slightly, engage the core and look up. Then pushing the bottom up so that you come back into your V and pushing the tummy towards the thigh so you're in a well bent downward dog. Now that's quite strong, so you can even come back to this video and do that again or pause it and do it again or you might have had enough. Now let's just walk to the top of the mat. Let's hang here in a nice forward fold. So bent, knees can be bent. You can grab hold of your elbows, just rock side to side. And then drop the hands. We are going to come slowly, slowly up. Keep those knees bent. Slowly come up. Shoulders come back and bring yourself into your Tadasana, your mountain pose. So I'm just going to step back a little bit so I've got a bit of room. Let's just have one balanced posture and then we'll come back down. To the mat and just do a couple of slower pace vin poses just to loosen up the back and just get it feeling really nice and yummy inside. So let's take the weight into our right foot first. Bring 
that left knee up. Now I want you to squeeze it up first. And we're just going to add a twist. So hold on to that left knee with your right hand and just take the left hand out and take your gaze back towards your thumb if you can. Otherwise, just look to the side. Have that left foot flexed. Really sort of like be strong in that standing leg. Wobbles are absolutely fine. Now come slowly back in, hands to heart. Try to keep the hold of that knee up. So you're using core strength to hold that knee up. Now we're just going to take that knee behind us into warrior three. So you can point the toes back, but the idea is to be parallel with your mat. So as much as you can be. And then we're going to, from here, take an inhale first, and exhale, just bring the fingertips down and extend that back foot up a little bit higher for a standing splits. And then as you exhale, or inhale first, and as you exhale, bring that left knee behind the right knee and just take Squeeze it all in, then inhale, stretch it up, exhale, squeeze it all in, inhale up, one more, squeeze it all in, and then re-extend that left leg up, hold, and then just bring that left leg towards the right to be parallel and underneath the hips. You can bend the knees and take that forward fold again, rocking side to side. Extending out the lower back. And drop the fingertips, bend those knees, Slowly come up into your mountain pose again. Bring the shoulders back. And we'll go to the other side. So this time, take the wet weight onto the left foot. So you might find one side's stronger than the other. Bring that knee up. So find your drifty gaze while we're facing forward first. Inhale, exhale, hold on to that right knee with the left hand and just come back and hold. Looking if it's available to you. Take another inhale. And exhale, coming back towards centre. Squeeze that knee up again. Take the hands to heart. So we're holding that knee up with our core strength. And slowly taking it back behind into warrior three. So pointing the toes, really engage strength in that left standing leg. So really squeeze everything up. Take an inhale and then exhale. The fingertips come down, coming into your half, your, your half split. Inhale first. Exhale, squeeze it in. So bring that right knee behind the left knee and bend the left leg. Inhale, straighten. Exhale, squeeze it in. Inhale, straighten, exhale, squeeze it in. This time once more, straighten and hold it there. 
You can have a bend in your knee. And exhale. Take the right foot alongside the left. Really taking that forward fold. You can grab hold of the elbows again and just rock side to side. And this time we're going to wiggle or heel toe our feet out to the side. So feet pointing out to the side, heels in, come down for your yogi squat. So if you need your block placed underneath your sit bones, you can do that. Just taking the elbows on the insides of the, the upper thighs and bringing your hands as close to your chest as possible and just having a nice straight back. So just hold here. You can close the eyes, just feeling how this is really nice on your hips and your lower back. And we're just going to take our hands out in front and just slowly and as gracefully as we can come onto the mat. Now, let's get our bolster and our block and just go into the more the yin postures now. So let's get our bolster in this position if we have got it. If you haven't got it, just use, you can just Sort of like have your block placed at the top of the mat on the lower level or you just don't use anything okay so as i have got a boss bolster I'm, i'll show you what to do with that so we're going to sort of like come and bring our right hip down towards the top the bottom part of the bolster which is near your um, right thigh and we've just got our knees bent and we're going to sort of like drape ourselves over the bolster but adding a little bit of a twist as well so this is a really lovely restorative pose for your lower back so come up on your fingertips inhale first and as you exhale you sort of like lengthen like we did with our child's pose at the beginning of the class and bring that left ear down and just allow yourself to relax. Now you can still do this without the bolster. You can use the block. You just turn towards the front of the mat. Inhale and just come down on your elbows and just rest your head on the block so it's up to you so get yourself nicely settled and once we're set it will stay here for about 10 breaths okay so just inhale first exhale slowly lower down so this class is a full length class so once you're in a nice comfortable position just allow everything to be heavy and just sink into the pose. So a really nice way to create a twist as well as lengthening the spine.
and just take a bath, two more breaths. Just start to put a little bit of weight into the hands to bring you up. Slowly come up. Let's just take our knees as wide as the mat. And using the bolster, we're just going to do an extended child's pose just to transition. So if you don't have the bolster, just go into your child's pose. So lengthen and then coming down, just resting. You can sort of like tilt your head to the side if you're finding that your, um, your head is sort of like scrunched a bit with the bolster. You might find that you've got the bolster tucked a little bit more closely in towards the thighs so you can hang your chin over the top of the bolster whatever works for you and just slowly come up we'll go to the other side with that nice little twist so bringing the left hip down and just having your legs sort of like bent um, towards the right side of the mat. Turn and face the bolster first or the front of your mat. Inhale up on the fingertips and then lengthen as you exhale. Come down and bring that right side of your cheek or your ear onto the bolster. So we'll stay here for about 10 breaths. Close your eyes. Try not to think too much. Try to just let this time be a time just for you. Whatever you need to do, we're still going to be there when we finish this class. Two more breaths. And then slowly take the weight into the hands, walk the hands up. Bring yourself around into a cross-legged position inhale you can just use the bolster for this or you can just allow yourself to fold you might even use your block we're just going to come down into a cross-legged forward fold but we do have our shins sort of stacked in front of each other I think we've done this one before so um, it's similar to thigh log, which is a pose I find really, really difficult because I um, don't have that hip extension to have my hips very open, but it's something that I'm working on. So there, I'll give you two options. You can either just have your shins stacked in front of each other and try to have the feet flexed when you do that. 
or you can try fire log pose, which is taking, as you can see, I've got a huge gap. People who have got open hips will have this knee a lot closer to that lower foot. So I've got the um, right foot on top of my left knee, so or the right ankle on top of my left knee. And if you're trying the fire lock, you can just stay upright. I'm going to go just into the parallel legs. I just find um, I like it, I like the way it feels, but I want to fold forward. So in fire log, the tr true fire log, I have to just stay upright. I'm getting a really deep opening with both sides of my hips, but I just feel like I want to stretch out my lower back. So I'm going to do the parallel stack and I'm going to use my block to come down. So flex feet, inhale to extend, and then exhale, just going to walk my hands out in front and just rest my forehead on the block. You might like to use your bolster in this pose. You might um, just have your bolster sort of like placed somewhere in between your belly, and you could even, you know, have it in the same position so it's tilted on an angle on top of the block. So we just get it right. We'll be here for about 10 breaths. And each time you exhale, just try to relax into this pose that little bit more. So, yeah. Depending on what you want to work on in this pose, it might be you just want to work on opening the hips. So by all means, you know, if you're doing the, the fire log pose, then you can fold forward if you find you've got that right ankle stacked on top of your left knee and you are very, very open, you're not feeling a thing, yeah, try folding forward with it but I'm just getting a nice extension. I'm getting a nice opening with my hip as well as a lovely stretch in my lower back. So this is just fine for me. And as I go into the pose, I may find that I can drop the block to the lower level and come down just that little bit more. Take two more breaths. And slowly come out, just really slowly walk yourself up. You might find you need to do just a little bit of a windshield action before you go to the other side, but that felt really nice for me. So again, we'll go to the other side. If you want to try your fire log, you just have that, uh, this time the right leg in front with the foot flexed and bring the right ankle on top of the left, blah, I'm really, really not good with my left and right today. The left ankle on top of the right knee. And you can either just stay upright and just gently encourage that left knee to get closer to that right foot. Just make sure you've got both feet flexed. Or if you are finding that that, you haven't got much of a gap at all and it's feeling like you can't even feel your hips open, then you would come forward and come down lower. Similar to what, you know, you can bring your forward arms down to the mat and rest your head on the mat, the block, whatever you feel good for you. 
those of you that are like me and working towards open hip and want to stretch out your lower back just stack in your shins in front of each other parallel let's inhale first put the block on the high level to begin with exhale let's go and extend that back as we bring our forehead down so we'll stay here for a good 10 breaths and again by all means if you feel you want to go lower just drop the block to the lower setting You don't need the block and you want to just have your forehead down on the mat go with that too just do what is good for your body just do you remembering that you know i'm just here i'm your teacher or you are your best teacher i'm just here to guide you through the poses so you know your body you know what your body needs for today. And one side is probably not as flexible as the other. I'm finding this side's not quite making it onto the lower setting of the block. So that's perfectly normal. Take two more breaths. And then slowly come up and just do that windscreen wiper action just to transition. And just take your block again. Now, this is an option. If you don't have a block, if you don't have a bolster, you would just come down into support, into your fish pose. So just bring the elbows down, sort of bringing the hands underneath the sit bone and just opening up the chest and allowing the head to drop, okay? So that's an option if you don't have the props if, and um, probably not as restorative as using props. But if you do have the props, you just take your block to prop that bolster up, sit back towards it, take the hands behind, inhale, open up the chest and then exhale. Just allow yourself to come down. Now, it would be nice if you could sort of like have the bolster as close to the lower back as possible. As you can see, using a bolster, you're not actually dropping the head back. If you have got a block and you don't like the feeling of your head just hanging, then just come up on your elbows and allow your head to just be supported by your block. So use those props, you know, to just really help you um, relax and enjoy the posture. So just breathing deep breaths into this. Just take one more full breath. And you can 
to open your mouth and sigh it out if that feels good. Always nice to have a cleansing breath. Now push into the arms to bring yourself up. And just remove the block and the bolster to the side. It's going to add a spinal twist. So coming down, taking your feet as wide as the mat, hands out to the side, and just drop the knees over to the right side and look to the left. If you want to make it even deeper, you can take that right foot on top of the left knee use it as like a counterweight to deepen the twist and that's an option as well or just allow the knees to hang and drop down Bring the knees back up through centre as you inhale and then exhale, drop them over to the left side, taking the gaze to the right. Again, if you did the left or did the foot on top of the knee, you can do that on this side. So for this side, you would have your left foot on top of your right knee. Inhale back through to centre. Now we are going to go into Shavasana. I will give you the option to either just take a normal Shavasana without any props or if you would like to have yourself raised a little bit, have the feet raised a little bit or the knees bent slightly, you just use the bolster again in that elevated position. And well, actually, what we will do rather than elevating it, with it, sometimes it's a little bit hard to keep the feet um, together in this position. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take the bolster and just have it underneath our knees. Okay, that's always a nice option. So just bring yourself down. It just helps release the lower back. So if you are sort of like Having, you know lower back issues and lying straight sort of um, puts a little bit of pressure on your lower back having that bulky cushion bolster even just you can use two blocks to elevate the knees it just really changes the whole pose now here you can have your hands down by your sides have your hands on your belly. Choose what feels right for you. And just allow yourself to sink into the mat. Just allow yourself to, you know, enjoy this moment. This is the best part of the class. Allow yourself to let go of any breathing. Allow yourself just to be heavy. Starting with the toes, the ankles, coming up to the shins and the calves. Feeling the weight of 
the knees, the thighs, the whole legs. And then feeling the hips connected to the mat, to the lower back. Your upper back, your shoulders. Feeling the weight of your hands, your arms. Heavy and sinking all the way into the mat. Coming to the back of your head. Your whole head. Allowing yourself to immerse in this relaxation pose. Start to wiggle your toes, wiggle your fingers, bringing movement back into the body. Take the hands above the head. Give yourself a nice big stretch. Then roll over onto your preferred side. Just using your arm as a pillow. And then pushing into the arms to bring you up. Come around into a nice comfortable seated position. Taking your hands in front of your heart in prayer. If you want to join in with closing the practice with OM, please feel free to do that with me. So what we do is we take an inhale to prepare and then exhale with the chant of OM. So inhaling first. up to your third eye, bowing with Namaste. Namaste everybody. So I hope you like that practice. That was sort of like a little bit different and that was our lower back area practice and I think we've sort of covered most of our body parts actually we haven't done our shoulders so we might do a practice that really opens up the shoulder area I actually um, had a little bit of a shoulder uh, tenderness which came down into my elbow so yeah I think we'll work on that one next I think what I might do is make it wrist free as well so that um, we're not actually putting pressure on our arms at all so please let me know what you thought of this class and whether it was helpful so I will see you next time bye